In the last tutorial, we learned how to texture bake the bump height inputs of this procedural material. Today, we'll be baking another type of map used for adding depth to our shader. These are called normal maps, and they are a much more speed-friendly option than height maps. There are two main types of normal maps that we'll be baking today. These are called OpenGL normal maps and DirectX normal maps, and they're used in different 3D softwares respectively. This video works as a standalone follow along, so no need to watch the last episode. If you want to follow along from one of the last tutorials, you can skip to the timestamp here since you already have your UV ready to go. For everyone else, if you just download the project file in the top right hand corner and in the description below, you can follow along for me just now. To start off, I'll left click my cube and press X to delete. Then I'm going to press Shift A, then under Mesh, I'll left click cube. I'll make sure I'm in the shader editor and I'm going to change my material of my selected object to Prismarine. Then I'm going to drag the top left hand corner out and this will create a smaller 3D viewport, which I'll just change to the UV editor. I'll then press Tab to enter edit mode in my 3D viewport, A to select everything, then press U and I'm going to choose Smart smart UV project since the UV we have in the UV editor just now is not the optimal cube UV I want. Once I press smart UV project, I'm going to change my island margin to 0.03 since that's what we've been using for all our bakes. If you want to do something a bit smaller, you can put it to 0.01. Just keep in mind you don't want to keep this island margin too small and that you will need to use the same island margin for all of your bakes. I'll then press OK and here you can now see our new UV. Now today, if I drag up my shader editor and scroll down, we're going to be baking what goes into this normal Normal channel. So that'll be these two bump nodes turned into one singular map. And this map is a lot more resource friendly than doing the two height maps into bump nodes separately. As I explained, there are two types of normal maps. And to start off, we're going to be doing OpenGL, which is the type of normal map that works by default in Blender. So I'll press Shift A and then under Texture, I'm going to left click Image Texture. We're creating this so we have something to bake our normal map onto. I'll then press plus new, change the name to Prismarine Normal OpenGL, just so it's nice and labeled. I'll then left click and hold the 1024px width and quickly drag down one. Then I'll click behind the number four, hold down the shift key, press the eight key to create a time symbol, press the number two and then just press enter. And then we have 2048 by 2048, creating a nice 2k texture for us. I'll uncheck the alpha channel and just press OK. I'll change my color space to non-color. If I zoom out in my UV editor, you can see we got a plain black image and that's the image we just created. Now we can go ahead and set up our bake settings. So I'll left click my render properties, make sure I'm in cycles since texture baking happens and cycles. Under my render sampling settings, I'll change my max samples to 10 and my min samples to 0. I can set a low count like this because baking does not require a large sample count. Then I'm going to change my bake type, which should be combined by default, to normal. Make sure all these settings and influence are the same since the green channel is what we're going to be changing for the direct X normal map. But for the OpenGL map, we can leave it at its default. Then I'm going to set a margin of 8 to make sure there's no errors. I'll then save my Blender file just to make sure if it crashes we don't lose all our progress. I then left click my image texture in the shader editor and just press bake. Great, we finished baking and now we can see our normal map here. If I zoom in, we can see these look like protrusions, as they should, and that's usually how you can tell it's an OpenGL normal map. Now my bake is finished, I'm going to make sure I save my image. So where it says image with a star, I'll left click this and press save as. And then we can just choose a place on our computer to save the image. I've just saved it with my other bakes. It's important we do this because when we save the Blender file, it won't save the image automatically. You have to save the image separately that way. Then I'm just going to press Shift A and then under Texture, I'm going to left click Image Texture. And now we're going to bake our Direct X Normal Map. So I'll press plus new, then under name, I'll type in Prismarine Normal Direct X. I'm going to leave it at 2K for my texture, keep the alpha unchecked and just press OK. I'll change my color space to non-color and I'm going to leave all my bake settings as is. And as you can see, I've changed my green channel to minus Y. And that's because Direct X Normal Maps have an inverted green channel. So we need to change it from the plus y which is by default to the minus y. Then I'll save my blend file and with my image texture selected I can go ahead and just press bake. Great now we've finished baking I'm going to zoom in to my normal map in UV editor just to see what it looks like and you can see these look more like indentations where they should be protrusions and that's usually what DirectX normal map will look like. Now I'm just going to go ahead and left click that image with a star beside it, left click save as and I'm going to save this image as well. Now I'm going to left click and box like these two image textures and just drag them down to the bottom here. Before I show you how these two image textures work, you might be wondering how to know which one to bake. For example, if someone asks you to bake them a normal map of a procedural material you've made perhaps, you'll need to make sure they tell you whether or not they want a DirectX normal map or an OpenGL normal map. 
So make sure to ask them this if they haven't told you. If they're not sure, you can either bake them both in OpenGL and the DirectX, or you can find out what software they're going to be using the texture in and just use what that software uses. For example, I believe Unreal Engine uses DirectX normal maps instead. So if you were baking this procedural texture so your client could use it in Unreal Engine, making a DirectX normal map would make more sense. Whereas if they were going to use it in Blender, you would maybe want to make them an OpenGL normal map. But the great thing is, let's say you downloaded a set of texture maps from the internet to use in Blender and one of them was a DirectX normal map. You could still use it because in Blender you can simply just flip the Y channel when using a DirectX normal map to achieve an OpenGL effect. So I'll show you how to plug in an OpenGL normal map and then I'll show you how to do DirectX with a flip channel. So first of all I'm going to unplug the normal of my bump since we're not going to need it now. Now you can see our depth details have disappeared as expected and we can't just plug this texture straight into the normal. We have to use a normal map node. So I'll press shift A then under vector I'll left click normal map and I'll put this node here and then I'm going to take my OpenGL one and plug the color into the color I'll leave my strength at one but you can mess around with that value if you want to make it less intense and I'm also going to press shift a then under input I'll left click texture coordinate and then I'm going to plug the UV into the vector essentially what this does is allows us to access this UV unwrap we've used here so we get the result we want I'm also going to plug the UV of this texture coordinate into our direct X one so we can switch between the two for demonstration purposes and then I'm going to plug my normal into into the normal of my shader which is connected to the material output which will then show us the depth details using the normal map. If I zoom in you can now see these depth details taking place noticing how it's not quite as detailed as using the bump node but still quite a lot of detail nonetheless. Here's what it looks like with it unplugged. I'll press Ctrl Z to plug it back in. And now if I was to press Shift D to duplicate this normal map, plug my direct X into the color here and then plug this normal into the normal. You'll notice how the shading of the simulated depth has changed and it doesn't quite look as right. So to fix this, I want to add two new nodes in between my DirectX normal map and my normal map node. So I'll press Shift A, then under Converter, I'm going to left click Separate Color. I'll then press Shift A again, and under Converter, I'll left click Combine Color. And then I'm going to plug my green into the green, red into the red, and blue into the blue. Now essentially it makes it so nothing's changed, which is what we want. But we can now press Shift A, then in the search bar we can search for invert and we can choose the invert color node and plug it in between the two green channels and now you can see it looks just like the OpenGL map we've used. Notice how there's no difference now I've switched to the other one. And yeah that's pretty much how you would use a DirectX normal map in Blender. So with that I'd like to thank you all very much for watching and if you do have any questions please make sure to ask since this topic tends to confuse people which is perfectly normal and part of the learning process. Also I've provided you with free PDFs which you can use to help you understand some of these concepts. I've got one on texture baking and I've also got one on maps in 3D. But yeah, apart from that, if you do want to support the channel, you can like, subscribe, share with someone who you think would find it useful, or there's also the YouTube thanks feature if you want to donate some money to the channel. But any kind of support is greatly appreciated. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.